Hey guys, this is Jamie. So I really wanted to talk about... <sighs> Why are you here? Yeah, I really wanted to talk about many things, but my dog decided to realize that he's more important than anything I ever do. Today I wanted to talk about community and fighting because what is a video without talking about our beautiful community of trans men and trans mask people fighting, right? That's a party as always. So there are a few trans men, trans mask, trans people which I can't stand and Kylie Jen Kylie Jen <laughs> Caitlyn Jenner is not the top of my list as other people have or Buck Angel. The top of my list is Leslie Feinberg. Yes, I truly hate Leslie Feinberg with a passion. So, what is my beef with Leslie Feinberg before I get onwards with this? Because I actually, I realized that I haven't actually made a video even touching Leslie Feinberg because I feel like it's such a controversial take. So, first of all, I... I have a very intense dislike. I do understand that if you identify as trans mask, there is a space to identify as a lesbian or not. But when you write a book while you're attending Mitch Fest about trans people and you pretty much shit on their entire experience, and now all we have to do is pretty much eat up the fact that that is considered the best representation ever for trans men? No. So I have a massive issue with the book. I have a massive issue with Leslie Feinberg's life. I have a massive issue with everything about Leslie Feinberg, actually. But not to stray away, I do want to say that this is where the topic comes in. I feel like there needs to be a division between trans mask experiences and trans men experiences. Our experience overlap a lot, but what applies to one may not always apply to the other. Same as trans mask experience may not necessarily be trans men experience, trans men experience may not necessarily be trans mask experience. And this, the second villain of my story is, um, I really hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Amos Mack. Amos? Amos? I'm really sorry, I'm foreign. So I really wanted to say that uh, I followed his journey in general, him for a while. So if you don't know, he's the uh, main guy behind Original Plumbing, which pretty much wanted to show the fact that trans guys don't need bottom surgery and it, Original plumbing was the slang back then. Well, it still is, to a sense. To talk about uh, how uh, you didn't have the bottom surgery or you don't wish to do it and you still have your natal genitalia. Now, you might say, yeah, well, okay, what's the issue with that, Jamie? Well, if you ever flipped through the magazine, if you ever looked at those early FTM publications, you'd notice that... While such people, like, like Mr. Mack, uh, talk about uh, trans mask representation, and they call all of us trans mask, they are very, very against dudes who do not fit into the mask box. Like, for instance, I am not exactly mask for mask, even though I've slept with men who are mask for mask. Even though some dudes consider me mask for mask when I'm not with my makeup and everything. Because obviously I doll myself up for YouTube, because hello, I can, I can sit here and be pretty and, and shit. So I really wanted to say that I was reading that article, which I mentioned before, and I got really pissed. Because, uh, so Mr. Mack did uh, a documentary about Billy Tipton. So who is Billy Tipton if you're completely out of the loop? So Billy Tipton was a musician, 
uh, back in the 20th century, and he was a trans man. But obviously, with history, you have a bunch of shit-faced historians who are like, oh, but what if he wasn't a man? Despite the fact that he lives his entire life identifying as one and, well, having taken on the male role, if he must. And uh, now people are saying, yeah, he's very important for transmasculine representation. What if he was transmask? It's like, what is transmask about him? Please tell me. And I do understand that back then it was much more difficult to identify certain things. But I'm pretty sure he wasn't trans mask. He pretty much felt very into being a dude as he was. He hid it and uh, etc. So reading this interview, I was really confused why someone who decided to touch on the subject of Billy Tipton, which everyone knows has in the community as a trans man to label it as a transmasculine experience. And another issue I have, um, Amos Mack is also a script writer and he pretty much took a different direction for Gossip Girl, which I do enjoy for its LGBT representation, but I do feel like this guy has some inner demons which he really needs to address. Which is, he did a rant uh, for Jordan Alexander's uh, character, who uh, is Julian Calloway in Gossip Girl, which was on the day of those like Santas running around New York. And that was a uh, episode directed, scripted, whatever, by him. And when me and my partner were watching it, uh, we were like, yeah, this is probably written by a really shitty trans guy who thinks that he can just complain about men and he'll get a golden star. So, so not only this guy has the audacity to think that every trans man experience is a trans masculine thing, but he also has the audacity to pretty much rant that men are bad. It's like, bitch, who the fuck do you think we are? I'm sorry, I say bitch, who the fuck do you think we are? To fucking anybody. So basically, he's this figure who keeps approaching on and off, is in the trans man spaces and etc. And then obviously there's Leslie Feinberg, who's like a ghost of whatever the fuck, which I just want to go away. And this made me question, like, because trans women don't get that. And it's very specific because there are obviously trans feminine people. And when you see a trans woman, you don't say that's a trans feminine person. You say that's a trans woman. So when you talk about trans men, you, you try to pretty much umbrella it and say trans masculine. That's so lovely. I use it myself as well. But when it comes to talking specifically about a trans man, I would not even hesitate to call him a trans man or a man. Why are you calling someone masculine? So anyway, I have a lot of issues with, uh, with Mac. And this goes back to Leslie Feinberg as well. Because Leslie Feinberg was transmasculine, transgender, transman. There's a lot of sort of questions. And obviously the, the famous book Stone Bunch Blues was... Let's call it as it is. It's, it's a glorification of detransitioning. It's a glorification of keeping the butch femme dynamics. It's a glorification of... Uh, heteronormativity within gay spaces which we are struggling with because obviously I've spoken about this before but we have like this up bottom drama and a lot of men are actually like obviously there's there has been the frauding movement 
Uh, now people call each other sides. I mean, they identify as sides, not top verse. Don't want anything to do with bottoming or topping. So I do feel like this idea that we have to be a top or a bottom, uh, a femme or a butch in the gay spaces is heteronormativity at its finest. So I find it really weird. And I feel like as the time goes, everyone's just fighting for their own thing. And this also intertwines with uh, what my partner was talking to me about, saying that indeed within the trans communities, you have a lot of people who go through uh, different traumatic instances while growing up, obviously because we're trans. And we hear certain things like, oh, you're not mask enough. Oh, you're not femme enough. Or like, if you do this, you're too femme and no one is going to take you seriously. And then that projects onto uh, people getting bullied online just because the other person got bullied for that in the first place. So that's what I feel is with what's going on with uh, Mr. Max heads, you know? I just feel like someone just told to me he can't be femme or maybe he just fell into the mask for mask box. And at the same time, he's pretty much labeling everyone trans mask. And he's doing rants on men. And... Uh, I do understand that not everyone can have bottom surgery. Not everyone wants bottom surgery. It is a very difficult decision. But at the same time, I fucking hate how glorified the idea is not to have it it is a life-saving surgery you shouldn't be shitting on that what if we just go around and say oh you don't need insulin or something it is a life-changing surgery it helps trans men trans masculine people as well if we're going for that so i do feel like there's this sort of if i can't do it no one else can. And that pisses me off. You need to understand that, indeed, trans men come in all shapes and sizes, just like dudes. So why are you painting dudes as this evil, evil thing? You're still a dude. And that guy identifies as a trans man. So you're going around saying that you're the special snowflake while you discriminate against men, while you discriminate against men who are not mask for mask, and you are a buffoon. You're literally just insane. So I just really wanted to get this off my chest. And I, I talked about, um, obviously, Mac and uh, Leslie Feinberg because I hate them both. And um, they speak a lot for the community. Yeah, maybe I'm exaggerating because I'm very into the representation we get, the tidbits of representation we get. And I do wish trans men were treated more seriously when we're clearly not treated very seriously. So yeah, and I also wanted to address that you can't just say trans men come in all shapes and sizes when you don't accept other trans dudes. And uh, then you might say, Jamie, but you're literally thrashing with the fine, but I am thrashing a fucking transphobe who went to Mitch Fest. And yes, you may tell me that at the end of the life, Leslie Feinberg went to trans camp, which was a counter to Mitch Fest. And but that's not what they're known for. They're known for Stone Butch Blues. And they never apologize for it. That is their legacy. That is the legacy their wife uh, sprouts and now calls Leslie by she pronouns. I don't know. And Leslie identified as trans and as a lesbian. And I do understand that there is an overlap. There can be when you're trans mask and a lesbian. 
But when you represent, you're supposed to represent trans men, it shouldn't be someone like that, factually. To represent trans most people, fine. But the thing is, when you go into a trans man space and you're like, well, what are we going to discuss? Stone Budge Blues! And it's like, why? Like, if we're gonna go into really weird lesbian fetish fetishizing trans men talk, we can go to The Well of Loneliness. The Well of Loneliness is an amazing book. It conveys the trans experience amazing, and not to mention Radcliffe Hall actually lived as a man. Instead of this nonsense that Leslie Feinberg went through with her life. In conclusion, I just hate people who are bigots. Pretty much it. I can be con contradicting to myself, but everyone has their own opinion. Mine, my opinion doesn't have to be the right one. But I do want to say that we need to be more tolerant. And I just hate people who are not tolerant to other people. Therefore, I am not tolerant to them. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please watch more videos. Like, subscribe. Share with your friends. Look at that. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.